Right, welcome along to the History Show here on Uxbridge FM. And our resident historian, Ken Pierce is back, chairman of the Uxbridge Local History Society. Good afternoon, Ken. And we should say your camera's not working, so we can't see you, but we can hear you, which is great. <laughs> oh, it's a great release to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first one today, we're calling the origins of Uxbridge. When you're ready, Ken. Thank you. In the 6th and 7th centuries AD, a number of Saxon tribes left Germany, as we know it today, and settled in the south of England. The names Essex, Sussex and Wessex are reminders of that migration. Our area was occupied by the Middle Saxons and became known as Middlesex. That name first appears in the year 704. One of those Saxon tribes was the Wixan, spelt W-I-X-A-N, and they settled by the River Colne, where the Treaty House and the Swan and Bottle are today. And this is where Uxbridge began. Those riverside dwellers found themselves beside one of the ancient highways of England, the London to Oxford Road. And at first, of course, the river would have been crossed there via a ford. But at some stage, a bridge was built, the Wixon Bridge. Early in the 12th century, the name W-O-X B-R-I-G-G-E, Waxbridge, appears in a charter, and variations of that spelling follow. A word about pronunciation. The letter W is a double U. So the place name was probably pronounced Uxbridge. The initial W survived in documents until the early 17th century, after which the single U became standard. The riverside hamlet became part of the manor of Colum, the lordship of which was held in the 12th century by the Bassett family. And at some stage during that period, Gilbert Bassett decided to create create a new Uxbridge on higher ground. We tend to think of new towns as a modern idea, for example, Milton Keynes or Poundbury, but it's been happening for centuries, and not least in the 12th century. Bassett settled on a stretch of the main road, uh, using today's names from Harefield Road to Vine Street. Strips of land were pegged out on either side of that road, and those strips are usually referred to as burgage plots. In this way, a new town was prepared. But would anyone come and live there? The decisive move to obtain well, was to obtain permission to hold a market there. About the year 1180, King Henry II gave permission for a market to be held in the new town every Thursday. The document giving this permission survives today in the borough archives and is generally referred to as the Bassett Grant. Written on parchment, it is in remarkably good condition, being about 840 years old. It is the oldest item that we possess. The market was indeed a success, the principal crop on sale being corn, and farmers from a wide area in Middlesex and South Bucks became regular visitors. The burgage plots gradually filled with houses and the population grew. So that's the early history of Uxbridge. It began with a small community of Saxons by the River Colne. And the great change came in the 12th century when a new town arose where we, found that we, where we find the town centre today. Uxbridge is a town that has moved uphill. 
Now, inevitably, I suppose the question arises, who was living round here before the Wixan tribe came? And the answer is probably almost nobody. Ah, thanks, Ken. Very interesting, as usual. <laughs> Mind you, Uxbridge at the moment is quite uh, quiet. It's a ghost town. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I was going to say it was as quiet as a turkey farm on Boxing Day, but... <laughs> as quiet as Uxbridge in lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. There's more to come, so stay tuned.